But that's really good if you know where you know the projection you need. Many of us have to work off specifications that have that. But many others are working in areas they're not sure which projection they should use. So we have a new capability, and that's the ability to do a spatial filter. So I want to say, show me only the projections that are valid for the current spatial extent. And now I can go in and get the right UTM projection for where I am without having to look it up. That makes it much easier to use these projections. But we've also made it easier to make good maps. Many of us have very detailed data, such as we see here. We've added tools to generalize this data, so as you zoom out on the data, we can start to simplify the features and simplify the roads and actually build, build built-up areas, the darker polygons here, that simplify the buildings and aggregate them together to show you built-up areas and simplify the connectivity on the roads but not lose it. This is a complex cartographic problem. We're able to automate this process so that you can focus as professional cartographers and map makers on refining the data even further. Now, I'd love to say that everybody only uses our software and our data. It's not always true. So we've done a lot of work at this release at improving data support, including KML. So what I have here is a KML file from the National Geographic Society. It's not a very pretty map. But it has some interesting information that we're now able to directly use from this. So we're able to use all the embedded information that come from any KML or embedded system directly. So you can share the experience of this file with others. And while they might just be able to look at it, you can start to use this to integrate this data with your professional GIS information. Many of us build complex maps, such as this geology map. And when you go and you make the map for this, and you have to create the legend, it can be a little overwhelming for those of you who don't use these maps every day, because there's a lot of items. There's a lot of items. There we go. Traditionally, in cartography, a legend should always show all possible combinations of things on the map. But that can be very confusing, because we've all answered the question, well, this is in the legend, where is it on the map? Well, now we have something called dynamic legends. So that as you zoom in, and the data on your map changes, the data in your legend also changes. So that as you get close and zoom in, only the features that are drawn on the map are actually in the legend, which is really useful. There's also another benefit of this that we actually didn't anticipate. If you look next to each of the classes, you'll see in brackets a number. That's the number of features that are actually on that map at that time. It's a wonderful QA tool when you see that there are 50 of this object on your map and there aren't supposed to be any, or there's supposed to be one. And you can start to use this to refine your information. OK, let's go back to slides. But it's not just about making the maps. GIS is about doing the heavy-duty analysis and making good decisions, taking that raw information and data that we have and turning it into actionable intelligence, something you can do something with. So we've added some new tools. And some of these may change how you do your work right now. One of those is, I've got a really long name. 
multi-scale spatial autocorrelation. What that really means is help you determine at what scale you should do your analysis. Right now, when you do an analysis, let's say a hotspot analysis or a density analysis, what scale do you do it at? Do you do it really zoomed in or really zoomed out? Actually, most of us just try to choose whatever we think is going to be best. This tool actually will go through the system and calculate how related the data is at the different scales. This will give you a better understanding at which scale you should actually do your analysis. And I'm fairly positive some of us, myself included, are probably going to have to redo some of our analysis that we've done in the past. I know my thesis might have some quirks in it I need to fix. But also, we've added new tools to interpolate surfaces better once you know the scale. It's called empirical Bayesian Krieging. That's my challenge for the translator for the day. It just makes Krieging simple. Krieging allows you to interpolate surfaces and create new data. But also, we've added tools that haven't ever been there, and people have made a lot of work trying to figure it out. If you're working with aerial data, post, postal codes, and you have another set of data, say election districts, rarely do those two match perfectly. So how do you take the demographic information from one and match it to the other? We know there are a lot of wrong ways to do it. We've all seen that. We now give you a tool to do that aerial interpolation to statistically match the data across disparate boundaries. We're also about looking at the data and discovering patterns. Giving large groups of data, we can now start to group and cluster this data in space and in time. To be able to understand where the data is and what the pattern of it is to provide better understanding. Add some other work done for you know, faster drive time analysis, adding the ability to do geodetic buffers. And those of you who deal with features that have many, many attributes, and you're trying to figure out relationships between them, we've added some exploratory regression tools, which will take every variable by every combination of variable in a classic statistics method to find out which combination is most related and many times, you can then use that combination to model your data. But we also focus on improving how you work with this data. We've added some new databases, Dentiza from IBM. But we've also added a new way to access the data. You can now directly read and write to any spatial or, or non-spatial database without using SDE which means you can connect to those back-end systems that are run by the IT department directly and follow their guidelines for access and use. We've added new tools to the Geo database to allow you to better administrate it, make it scale and perform easier, but also to do little things like update a schema, delete a column while the data is in use. And we've published an open API for the file Geo database to ensure that everybody has open access to your data. This has been mentioned several times today, that imagery is core to what we do. The GIS community is probably the largest group of image professionals in the world. We've added more tools at 10.1 to make this easier. Probably the most useful for all of us is this tool that automatically enhances your imagery. So when you add the image to the map, it looks good. You don't have, it doesn't come in dark or too light and you have to go fiddle with it. It just looks good by default. But two new areas that are very popular in the image world is the ability to do highly accurate image measurement, to be able to measure the height of a structure from its shadow or from its face directly off the image using the camera information. 